Hello there. Today I'm going to be adding a scabbard to the knife that I made in the previous videos. Now most of the time when I make a hunting knife, I give it a simple leather sheath. I like these because they're quick to make and easy to decorate. However, with this knife, most of the weight is in the handle. What this means is that if I were to give it a scabbard like you see here, it would tip over. I could avoid this by adding a strap to hold the handle in place. But I don't particularly like those, so let's do something different. Instead of a standard leather sheath, I'm going to be making a wood cord scabbard, similar to what people would use for a sword blade. To begin with, I take several panels of wood and I trace the knife blade onto one of them. This will serve as the bottom of the scabbard. Now I take one of the pieces and I split it into little splints. I'm splitting them using a pocket knife and a mallet. This is just what I had to hand. I'm going to need two splints that are the full length, and I'm going to need two more that are about half length. Now I've got a pot of hide glue ready. I'm just going to smear this over the base layer, then stick the splints down as well as I can, hold them in place with a tiny little clamp. The splints don't need to fit against each other perfectly. Obviously it would be better if they did, but it's not strictly necessary. I really like working with hide glue. Because it dissolves in warm water, I can be as messy as I like without fear of the consequences. The next thing I'm doing is I'm taking a strip of fur and gluing it down the center of the scabbard. This will prevent the blade from rattling and will ensure a snug fit. The best thing to do would be to glue a strip of fur on each side of the scabbard, but this is a great deal more finicky. Now it's time to glue the lid onto the scabbard. Same thing as before, lots of hide glue and then a clamp. Once you got that done, you want to stick the blade into the scabbard to make sure that everything still fits. You can do this with hide glue because it's really easy to clean off. You don't want to do this with some industrial glues. Six hours later and the glues have set to the point where you can do a bit of work on them. I'm just going to saw off the corners that I don't need. The next morning the glue will have fully set and I can do a bit of serious work on it. I like to do the rough work with a pocket knife. Once I've finished the rough work I move to a rasp to do the middle work. A little bit more shaping, mostly I'm just removing the rough corners. Then back to everybody's favorite tool for the finish work. Fortunately it's just soft wood this time, so the belt sanding goes really quick. Okay, the wood core is finished. It fits fairly snugly and it looks alright, so let's move on to the next step. So to finish off the scabbard we need a leather covering for it. I got a scrap piece of brain tanned deerskin that I've just been dying to use, so first thing I do is I stretch it over the core and I mark the edge. If you're working with veg tan cowhide, you have to soak the hide before it will stretch. Buckskins are stretchy enough that you don't have to soak them. After I've marked the edge, I then trace along the silhouette of the core. Before I cut, I slide the blade in and out of the scabbard to make sure that it can be drawn easily. You don't want to make the covers too tight. Then I make the cut with a little leather knife. Using a ruler to make sure that the rest of my cut is square.
double check that everything still fits. Then I fold over the edge and trace it so that both edges of the leather are symmetrical. A few little cuts to make sure that everything is properly round. And now I'm ready to begin punching holes. You want to punch the holes ahead of time, a little bit smaller than the core of the scabbard, so that the hide will be stretched as you sew it. If you want to be absolutely certain that your holes will line up, you can get a little roller tool like this one. Then I proceed to punching the holes with an awl. Now that that's all done, it's time to start sewing. The best stitches to use here are either a running stitch or a combination of a running and a whip stitch. If you're sewing with pre-punched holes, you want to use a blunted needle so that the needle will try and find the holes rather than go through the leather. When you get near the end, you want to insert the wooden core. If things don't line up quite right, you can punch additional holes to fix it. It's always hard to tell how much footage I should include in these videos. The sewing is the most time-consuming step, and therefore it feels like it should be the longest section of the video, but it's also the section I have the least to say about. I'll put in some background music, maybe that'll make it tolerable. Once I've finished sewing a section, I cut off the loose little bits of leather beyond the seam. Once I've sewn in the leather surrounding the wooden core, I then begin punching the holes for the sleeve above the core. These don't matter as much, so I'm just going to do it by eye. And there we have it, the leather cover is sewn on. But we're not done just yet. Time to go over the edges again and just clean up any loose spots. In order to make the scabbard wearable, we're going to need to add a couple of belt holes. I start these with a hole punch before switching to a tiny little knife to widen them. You want to be very careful here. If the cuts aren't perfectly straight, it'll look stupid. The scabbard is still looking kind of plain, so I'm going to add a bit of stitching near the top. This is just decoration, so it doesn't matter if the spacing isn't perfect. Then I'm just going to whip the edges. This will make the edges a little bit more durable, but mostly I'm just doing it for looks. Because the cover is just held to the core by friction, it's very easy when you're sheathing the knife to slide it between the cover and the core. To prevent this, I'm going to tie a piece of leather around the mouth of the wooden scabbard. This will make the leather cover too tight for any mistakes. To do this, I make several tiny little slits in the leather cover, just below the edge of the wooden core. I then slide a thin strip of leather through the holes. 
you want to ensure that the holes are slightly smaller than the width of the leather, just to make sure that everything stays tight. Once I've got the leather threaded through, I just tie it off with a double overhand knot, trying to get it as tight as I can. Then I just cut off the excess leather around the knots, and now I'm done. I think it turned out alright. It's a little plain. If I wanted to, I could decorate it further, but for the purposes of this video, that's enough. The sleeve at the top of the scabbard keeps the knife balanced when worn. That's all I have to say. If you stuck with me through all three videos, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.